For the last three weeks, 21 contestants have competed in a lie, cheat, and steal tournament. Tonight, our seven finalists compete for all the money in the bank. Welcome to our lie, cheat, and steal March Cheatness Finals. How dare you impugn my fever? Why didn't you listen to me? All I heard was sexy babysitter. <laughs> Have a recap of the tournament so far. Meet our seven players for tonight who have moved on to the finals. In week one, the players found a single cheater, and the three finalists decided there were no cheaters left. Those three finalists were right, and they took $174 into the finals. Big now they've all chosen new identities for tonight. Please welcome Ali, MK, and Carmen. In week two, our players started out rough, eliminating three consecutive honest players. However, they got back on track, eliminated back-to-back -back cheaters. The two remaining players moved on to the finals with their original identities intact. And 41-31 to show for it. Welcome, Brian and Liz. And in last week's game, our players went four for four in voting out cheaters, and they went into the final round confident that no cheaters were left. They all voted no cheater, and they learned that they were wrong. Random honest player was eliminated, and the players took 6106 and their suspicions of each other into the finals. It's Alex <laughs> and Aza. Now, these seven players are here to compete for a bank that has grown. Thanks to a bit of side betting in the last weeks, the final bank for tonight will start out at $290.37. Goals are the same as always. Vote out cheaters, keep all your money. Vote out honest players, lose half of it. As with the previous games, I guarantee there is at least one cheater in the game, at least one honest player in the game. And the players from week one have chosen new identities. Everyone else, your identity remains. If the cheaters vote out all the honest players, they win by default. It's a lot harder to be a cheater. But if the honest players vote out all the cheaters, they'll still have to correctly vote no cheater. Like in other weeks, we'll talk about that when a cheater gets voted out. Of course, we have some other players here hoping to make some money tonight as well. And that is our audience. They've been building their bank by answering questions and gambling. They'll continue to build it tonight. I can guarantee one way or the other at the end of the game tonight, every audience member who's around will be playing for the money in that bank. They have $109 right now. and They'll keep making bets throughout the game. We'll get started here with our first round. Two questions. Unlike preliminary matches, no advantages to pick off a board tonight. But there will be an immunity challenge in round three. So there is a chance at immunity a bit later. Got our seven players ready to go. Let's begin our lie, cheat, and steal March Cheatness finals. First question. Name the 10 best Curb Your Enthusiasm guest stars, according to a Flix article from February of this year. Show ended just this week. So these are the best guest stars. You're going to have 30 seconds to talk it out as a team. And then we'll go to Allie. Go. Oh, I love that show. I, I was a big fan of Seinfeld, but I like Curb Your Enthusiasm. Um, Bob Odenkirk was good. Um, John Hamm was great. Oh, yeah. Um, Albert Brooks was good. Yeah. Was I think the cast of Seinfeld was actually on it. Oh, yeah. I don't know yeah, about I it. Don't it's been a long time. That is time. There are 12 seasons, a lot to go off of. Uh, number one is worth 50 cents, down to number 10 for $5. Allie, give me a Curb Your Enthusiasm guest star. Regret to say I've never seen a single episode, and I'm truly embarrassed. So I was just listening. So I'm going to go with the first name I heard, which was Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk, always great. Not one of the top 10 best guest stars, no. All right. That, that, that and, uh, I would have guessed that, yeah. MK. Um... I'm going to do Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks, a uh, very good start. He's number 10, $5. He's great on everything he pops up in. Carmen. You ought to know. I'm crossing my fingers. Alanis Morissette. Alanis Morissette. Good guess. Not on the board. No. Brian. Uh, good old Mad Men star John Hamm. Yeah, John Hamm is number seven for 350. He's done Mad Men and then a whole bunch of comedies. <laughs> Liz. I'll go with the other Brooks and say Mel. 
Yeah, Mel Brooks, number four, two dollars. Alex. I have very little idea what this is. Um, so I'm just gonna go with what I was listening and somebody said that they thought the Seinfeld cast was on there. So uh Jerry Seinfeld. Uh yeah, there was a whole season based around a Seinfeld cast reunion. They put the whole Seinfeld cast as yep. number one. Okay. 50 Thanks. cents. Very good, Alex. And Aza. Uh somebody stole John Ham. Uh does Super Dave, does uh he count as a yep. Albert Brooks's brother? Does he count as a uh yes. as a guest star? Yeah, Bob Einstein, number three, 150. Wait, Super Dave is in Super Dave Osborne? Yep. That's Albert Brooks's brother. Oh, oh, cool. All right, uh, we're gonna go to our audience next. Susan, what do you think? You can talk it out. Only the audience is here making answers, so you guys can talk it out as a team if you like. Get a right answer, you can keep going. Get a wrong answer, uh, I'll reveal the others. I'm pretty sure we got nothing. Does anybody well, have any guesses? Michael J. Joe, Fox? Joe had suggested someone. Um, we'll guess Ted Danson. Ted Danson is number two. Very good. Ooh. Yep. Uh, um, Joe, you're next. Uh, Ted Danson was my guess. So <laughs> um, someone just typed Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. No, sorry, not on the board, but you got the one there. Uh, so you got number two for a dollar. Let's see who else is on the board. We have Wanda Sykes. Oh. Mm. Elizabeth Shue. Richard Kind. Oh, oh it's a treat. And Lucy Lawless. Yeah. I, I saw a tweet the other day that said, oh, Richard Kind's going to be on Only Murders. I watched that show and would have guessed he was already on it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is how I feel about it, yeah. All right, moving on. Double money question before we vote here. Name the U.S. state capital by the origin of its name. Named for a mythical bird that rose from the ashes. Named after the fourth U.S. president. Named after a British city known for white cliffs. Named after the future Queen Anne of England. Named for the author of 13 books of the Christian Bible. Named after a German chancellor, Spanish for holy faith. Named after a Quebecois gold prospector, William Larimer named it for the governor of nearby Kansas Territory, unaware he had resigned. And named after yeah. a Muskogean word for old fields or old town. 30 seconds, then we go to MK. Go. That's some obscure stuff, God. <laughs> uh, Phoenix is three Dover, Dover. or Charlottesville. That's not a capital, though. Not I don't, I don't know. Is it? No, I think it's a capital. And is Charlotte's Saint... not the capital of North Carolina either, so. No, um, it's not. Is so Saint Paul Muskogee the capital is, of Muskogee is Oklahoma, uh, but I feel like it wouldn't it, be that easy, I right? I would assume that it would be, and also Paul is the only one that wrote that many books in the Bible. Right. Time, okay. MK, you're first. Uh, it's three Dover? Yep, yeah. White Cliffs of Dover, Dover, Delaware, three dollars. Nicely done, MK. Carmen. I'm going to try for Spanish, um, Santa Fe. Santa Fe is correct. Very good. Seven dollars. Brian. Uh, well, I know in sixth grade, we had to memorize the president in order. And I remember Jefferson was, I think, a third and fourth. So I'm going with, what, two dollars for Jefferson? No, not Jefferson. I'm sorry. Liz. The fourth president was James Madison. Yes, Madison, uh, Wisconsin. Very good. Like I said, sixth grade. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Alex. St. Paul, Minnesota. For which one? Uh, the 13 books of the Christian Bible. Yep, St. Paul. I know very that good. not because I live right near St. Paul, but because <laughs> I went to a Baptist school and we had to memorize all the books of the Bible. I'm sorry, I know what that's like. Aza. Um, weird, I thought you knew it because I just said it. Um, <laughs> number one, uh, I'll go for these one. Number one's Phoenix. Phoenix, of course, one dollar. And Allie. Ah, uh, y'all took all of the ones that everybody talked about or that I knew. I'm going to go out on a limb. The only thing I know to associate Muskogee with is Oklahoma. So I'm going to try Oklahoma City, but I don't think it would be that easy. Yeah, there is a Muskogee in Oklahoma, but that is not the answer. No, I'm sorry. 
All right, audience spears. Okay, so uh, I am not sure of any of these, but uh, someone's saying, uh, if you don't mind my taking my taking your answer there, Joe. Somebody's saying Annapolis for, for which four? one? For um, yes, four. Queen Anne, Annapolis. Very good. Four dollars. That makes sense. Uh, next up, we got Amy. If you are here. Hey, Susan, can I take your answer? Yeah, of course. Uh, $10 is Tallahassee. That is right. Old Fields or Old Town is Muskogean for Tallahassee. Very good. Oh. oh. $10 for the audience. They get to keep going. Ian, if you're here. Yeah, I'm here. Um, and I will also steal one of Susan's answers. Uh, where she says eight is Juno. Juno oh, is right. Yeah. Very good. Eight more dollars. Right. Nice. Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Leave it to the Canadian to know all the state capital origins. Mike. <laughs> I'm going to go with an answer I had come up with. Uh, the $6 answer, I believe, is Bismarck, North Dakota. That's right. Bismarck, oh, North Bismarck. Dakota. Very good. We've got one left, and the audience can do a sweep here. Next up is Tom. Tom, do you have a guess for number nine? We only have 41 mm -hmm. left. Um. Let me, would that be Laramie, Wyoming? No, that's not the capital of Wyoming. He named it for the uh, governor of the Kansas oh, Territory, Cheyenne who was Cheyenne. Governor Cheyenne. Denver. Oh, Denver. Oh. And yeah, and he did, was not aware that Governor Denver had, in fact, resigned. So it didn't do much good to that's curry favor. That's so awkward. It's so embarrassing. In the bank, at the end of round one, we have 320 87. Wow. Here are the totals what? for the round. And a quick check. The audience is at $138. Very impressive. Talk it out. What do we think? Who are we suspicious of? We know there's at least one cheater. No clue. This is the first time y'all see how dumb I really am. But well, uh, at the end of last week's show, there were two people remaining. One of yeah. them was a cheater, and it's not me. So it's got to be Alex. No, oh. uh, one of them was a cheater, and it's not me. So... Huh. I mean, just clarifying the rules of the game here. You did vote on an honest player in the final round. You could both be cheaters. What are the Ooh. chances of, although, no, because I kept saying, like, what are the chances that we have another cheater and that it kept going up? I don't so, think like, you should ask what are the chances in this game because I do have the numbers and I can't tell you. <laughs> I see, here's the thing. Given the last game, I know that I was honest, which means that I know that Ava was cheating, but he knows that I know. So <laughs> I feel like either way, I'm fucked. I feel like this is a game of Survivor where the rest of us have mm -hmm. to pick between one of you two. <laughs> okay, Tom. So you know how confused she is. How, how... His father and a lawyer who, which is, which I is the most convincing argument. Can betray no confidences. <laughs> Colin needs a torch to pass around or something. You hear how dizzying and confusing her logic is? Just make it easy. Vote for her. <laughs> that's it. That's that's the end of my argument. Vote for Alex. I've, I've said all I need to say. My conscience is clear. Yeah, we were getting dangerously close to the uh, yeah famous uh, yeah uh, battle of wits from the uh, uh, Princess Bride. Would anyone like to add anything before we vote? I just I want to know what seven he's of you, chewing. Seven of you to please lock in your votes now. And audience, if you want to make any bets, you're welcome to do that as well. All right. Votes have been cast. Let's see who the first player leaving the game is going to be. You're going to keep all that money you've earned in your bank. Let's start with Brian. Brian, who'd you vote for? Uh, I went with MK only because she has the highest score. One for MK, Liz. I also said MK, but for no reason. No, okay. <laughs> Two for MK. Sorry. MK, who'd you say? I said Aza. Okay. Carmen, who'd you say? Um, alphabetical, Alex. <laughs> Aza, who'd you say? Well, obviously, I said Alex. Two for Alex. Alex, who'd you say? I feel like this is going to get very messy because I said Aza. 
It is indeed very messy, and we all live for drama. To Aza, to Alex, to MK. Allie, are we going to break this tie? We are going to break the tie. I'm sorry, voting um, for men worked for me last time, so I said Aza. <laughs> that is three for Aza based on a strategy of how last week's game ended, and Aza has been voted out of the game. All right, a uh, big moment of truth here because you have a lot of money on the line. Aza, we have to know. Were you a cheater? I uh, am both a victim of misandry and I am a cheater. Yes. <laughs> he was there a cheater, is. which means you are the fool. And there are six players left in the game. Maybe he was the only cheater left in the tournament. Maybe there were more. We'll be right back on Lie, just... Cheat, and Steal. Welcome back to Lie, Cheat, and Steal, the March Cheatness Final. Before the break, our players caught the first cheater of the night. Aza is out of the game, and the full 320.87 remains in the bank, which means it's time to talk about how you can end this game tonight as honest players. If every one of you votes no cheater instead of casting a vote, and you are right, in that moment, you will win the entire bank split between everyone left. If you're wrong, as usual, the bank will be cut in half. A random honest player will be kicked out of the game. So if you think he was the only cheater, you can vote no cheater, or you can play a little longer, see if you can find if there are more cheaters, or just keep voting people out to get a higher share of the bank. But we have a potential of six rounds tonight, so let's keep going. There are six of you left. This is our answer board. I'll give you a question with 20 possible answers. 10 are right, 10 are wrong. They're valued from 50 cents to $5. Here comes the question. Which of these are actual characters in the infamous Christian Left Behind series? Uh, very, very bad at coming up with names, and they have to do it on an international scale because it takes place all over the world. So, yeah, these are pretty bad. Which of these are real characters in that series? There was a Nicolas Cage movie and another one as well. Uh, Ray Steele, Abdullah Smith, Stavros Milos, Flannery O'Doyle, Jericho Kane, Kip Hackman, Floyd Barber, Gustav Zuckermandel, Sonny Kuntz, yes. Flor de la Cor, <laughs> Manu Mazda, Viv <laughs> Evans, Icy Spoon, Joseph Voodoo, Kevin Shinnick, Reich Planchette, Rick Rockwell, Kurt Cameron, Ken Ritz, and Dora Rehoboth. Again, 10 of those are actual characters in the Left Behind series. T 30 seconds to talk it out, and then we'll go to Carmen. Go. And you made up, I'm assuming. <laughs> they all have, they're all something from someone around the I feel uh, like yeah. I remember there being a Ray Steele um, and possibly a Flannery O'Doyle. Jericho seems legit. Jericho seems legit, but I'm trying to remember if it's actually a character in the book. It is unfortunate that I know some of these names <laughs> from the actual book, but. Time, okay. Uh, yeah, obviously we're, we're just guessing here. <laughs> I assume most people haven't read these, and that's for the best. Carmen, what do you think? I am going to try the Flannery O'Doyle. Flannery O'Doyle, those defensive Irish stereotypes as Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Yes, that is a real Left Behind character. Three dollars, Carmen. Brian. I was go, going uh, with that answer being Irish, but um, Fleur Delacour was a Harry Potter character, if I don't uh, correctly uh, remember, but I, I just, um, I never saw the show. Uh, it's a book series, so that's fine. Reich Planchette. Uh, the most unsubtle name possible for the third Reich and that thing on the uh, Ouija board. Reich Planchette is, in fact, a real Reich. Oh my God. I think a Planchette is the, the thing you move around the Ouija board. That's what I just said. Yeah, yeah. it's on a Ouija board. Yeah, yeah. real yeah. subtle, guys. Who's a villain? Uh, the guy that's the third Reich at our least favorite board game? Yeah, Liz. <laughs> A lot of these names are just spectacular. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of Kip Hackman, who I assume is a 1930s detective. Kip Hackman? No, that was one of Chris Pratt's aliases on Parks and Rec. 
Oh my god. Okay. All right. No, I was correct. <laughs> Same brain power we're working yep. with here, Alex. I feel like, and it's even more cursed to say that I read the YA version of this series, <laughs> not the adult version. But I feel like there was a Ray Steel in the like original Left Behind series. Ray Steele, the name they didn't have to change for uh, the porn edition is correct. 50 cents. <laughs> he was Nicolas Cage's character in the movie. Allie. Oh, okay. I feel like the first two were equally ridiculous. So I'm going to go with Gustav Sucker Mandel. Gustav <laughs> Sucker Mandel. He was right. Very good. Oh, nice. MK. I feel like. Kevin Shinnick is the nice, bland, white bread hero. Kevin Shinnick? <laughs> Kevin Shinnick was the host of Where in Time is Carmen Sandiego. I'm sorry, no. Um... <laughs> but he has, a, he has a great author made this up name, so I had to use it. Let's go to our they audience They already had now. Ray Steele. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, next up in our audience, Lisa, you're next. Uh, let's see. Uh... This series seems stupid enough to include <laughs> a, a celebrity that's a thinly veiled Kurt Cam Kirk Cameron that they call Kurt Cameron. Kurt Cameron. No, I just made that up for the okay, same fair reason. You just so you're stupid enough to make that up. Not in all those like rapture movies. <laughs> yeah, he, all right, the, uh, he was in the less popular movie version. Let's see. Okay, uh, okay, Abdullah okay. Smith. I, I, yeah, I, that's real. I, I know we don't get points for this, but right. I have to. I sure. have to point out the one that jumped out at me as the most obvious Colin made up name. My new Va Maz my new Va my new Mazda. My new Mazda. Uh, that my is new a Mazda real left behind character. Oh no! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. Yep. Yep, oh I can't believe it either. I was not, I had not remembered it. Yeah, it sounds like a Bart Simpson name, but it's a real Left Behind character. What? All right, now let's go over the other answers here. You got, you got a few of them. Stavros Milos was Oliver Platt's character on Fargo. Mm. Jericho Kane was Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in End of Days. Flor Delacour, you were right, Brian. That's a Harry Potter character, equally bad at ethnic names. Sonny Kuntz is again real, despite sounding completely made up. Floyd Barber is just the barber on Andy Griffith. Uh, Viv Ivins is real because if you look at the name, it's 666 V-I-V-I-V-I. -I -I -I. Really subtle. Guys. Oh, oh my god. god. Uh, Icy yeah. Spoon was the name of the ice cream store owner in The Night of the Hunter. Joseph Voodoo. No, I made that up. Rick Rockwell was the uh, infamous star of Who Wants to Marry a Multimillionaire. The other two were right. Ken Ritz, Bindura Rehoboth were wow. actual characters. I, I left out the more offensive ones because just there's a certain line where it's not funny, but yeah. Like some uh, of the Jewish names. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. It's fine. Should have gotten yeah. Floyd the Barber. My and, new Mazda is that that was one of the less offensive ones. Yes, I'm not I'm not kidding. That was one of the less offensive ones. Yep. <laughs> Name the fast nice. food burger by its ingredients. Three tiered bun, two beef patties, lettuce, special sauce, American cheese, pickles, diced onions. Two square beef patties, ketchup, mayo, bacon strips, American cheese. Four ounce beef patty, mayo, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, ketchup, sliced onion. Two patties, sesame seed bun, selection of 15 free toppings. One small square beef patty, grilled onions and pickles. Two beef patties, two slices of American cheese, lettuce, tomato, onions, and spread. Four ounce beef patty, peppered bacon, leaf lettuce, tomato, onions, ketchup, Dijonese sauce, American cheese, potato flour, sesame seed bun. Two fresh beef patties, American cheese, ketchup, mustard, red onion, pickles, and mud butter bun. Three beef patties, two slices of American cheese, shredded lettuce, and a big twin sauce. I will not accept a heart attack, which is what that is. And eight ounce beef patty, American cheese, one hot dog, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, ketchup, mustard, and kettle chips. 30 seconds to talk, then we'll go to Brian. Go. I have no idea. McDonald's? The that's easy. Well, you have to you, say the you burger. You don't right? sound like a heart attack. So, yeah, I need I need the name of the burger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I so think just say the restaurant. I know oh. one one is Big Mac. That's it. That's the only one I'm sure about. The second one doesn't Wendy's do square burgers, but I don't know. Then is it? I Dave was gonna say Special? I think Wendy's does square burgers, so it could be the one small old square beef patty is um, just a Wendy's hamburger. Maybe a Baconator is number two. Oh, Baconator is a good one. That's my time. Okay. Uh, with most of these, I do need the actual name of the burger. There's one or two where it's just the name of the restaurant and they don't have a special name for the burger. So at worst, I'll ask you to be more specific. Brian, you're first. Um, because I've been there several times, let me go with number six, which is known as a double double. And it's best if you get it animal style. Which just has like sauteed onions on it, but that's in and out burger. In and out, double double, very good, Brian. Six dollars, Liz. I'm a chicken nuggets person, so like. You do all have one rollover if you want to use that. Well, I don't want to do. Okay, so I, I feel like num the four dollar one is Five Guys. That's right, Five Guys. Very good. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they don't have a name for it. They only have that. And it's just all customizable. So very good. Amazing. That's yeah. the one place where I order burgers. <laughs> Everything else is chicken nuggets all the way. Well, they do have the little and the big, but still. yeah, fair, fair, fair. <laughs> we don't judge size here, Alex. Um, is number five just a Wendy's hamburger? Number five is not Wendy's. I'm sorry, oh. Allie. Oh, I'm torn because I have a guess for number five but i can't remember if it has pickles or not and then i think i know one two and three. Oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna take a chance and i'm gonna say number five might be white castle white castle their basic slider is right very good five dollars oh duh yeah i didn't remember it had pickles <laughs> it looks like it's somewhat optional but in the me the regular website said pickles so that's why i put we it there we okay. talked about white castle a lot this weekend in louisville so. <laughs> um I'm gonna go big. Is eight the Whopper? Eight? No, not the Whopper. I'm sorry, Harmon. I'm gonna go for three with um Wendy's, a Junior uh cheeseburger deluxe. Three? No, it's not Wendy's Junior cheeseburger deluxe. Sorry. Uh, let's go to our audience now, Joe. Okay, I think uh, three. I think is a Whopper. That's right, the Burger King Whopper. Very good. Uh, next up is Susan, who I know is all about fast food hamburgers. Man alive, this is <laughs> just perfect category for me. People can shout out answers to help her if they and want. I, to yeah, please help me because I think somebody said Baconator for number two, and I do think that's right. I, I, I'm, I'm sure number yeah, one is a Big Mac. Right. Number one is almost definitely a Big Mac. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. John so said one is definitely a Big Mac. Okay, well I'll go with that. That sounds strong. Big Mac is right. One dollar. Beers next. Beers, what do you got? Ah, I, I don't know any of these. In spite of the fact that I eat burgers pretty much all the damn time. Uh, someone help him. Who's got? So one? I'm gonna I'm gonna get because uh, someone said Baconator for two. I'm gonna guess the number two is the Baconator. Wendy's Baconator, very good. Two dollars. <laughs> next up is Amy seven eight nine ten. Take a guess. <laughs> all right, audience. Do you guys know any other ones? Seven dollars. I know Culver's um, does buttered good. buns. Oh, you said Culver's has buttered buns, right? The butter yeah, burgers. Yes. Culver butter does. Butter. Culver's does the butter burgers. Uh, yeah. That is. That one, um. Wait. What number is that? That might be the eight dollar one. Eight has a buttered bun. Oh. Okay. Um. But we need to know like the specific name of it. The butter. Just, just, just the butter burger. Butter burger. I, guess. I mean, that yes, might yeah. that might be a double it's butter burger yeah, since there's called, two of them. The Culver's butter is the butter is burger. Yeah. Very good, the butter burger, which is oh, sounds like an insult for somebody, but no, it's the name of the sandwich. <laughs> the call nice. burger. We're still going here, audience. Ian, you're next. Uh, I have no idea at this point. Anybody want to help me out? Mm -hmm. I don't know any of the other ones. You could put Jack in the Box in here somewhere. I I don't know Jack in the Box in and out. Uh, I don't know any of those ones. All right, they're, they're I, think we're, I think we're about though. done. You guys right. know any anything about like Sonic Burger or Rally Burgers? Hey, Colin. Yeah. Is, is the first? I know that Sonic has a hot dog. If the nine dollar one, if the nine dollar one can be two different sandwiches, does the audience get eighteen dollars? What What do you have, Asa? 
because the big twin is a, a sauce from Hardy's and or Carl's Jr. So it would be the right. big Hardy or the big Carl. <laughs> Big Hardy is right, nine dollars. Very good. Also the big Carl. Holy I, I think that that's actually like the the same chain, but it's yes. yeah. it's called different yeah. things and different. Yeah. different yeah. Does anyone things. know ten or seven? Last chance. I used to okay. make number ten on my own, but I never gave it. Well, the, the the name I gave it was the hot damn burger because it's a hot dog <laughs> and hamburger. It's from Carl's Jr. It was something of a joke, but they made it. It was called the, you're going to love this, the Most American Thick Burger. Oh, God. That was my name Seven. in high school. <laughs> That's Seven like is another McDonald's one. Special. Seven is the infamous McDonald's Arch Deluxe. The what? Okay. The ah, $300 yes. million dollar campaign for McDonald's for adults and then immediately discontinued it. Right, in the bank. 346.37. Here are the totals for the round. Take a quick look at the audience. They made some more money. They're up to $170. Talk it out. What do we think? Is there a cheater? If so, who? I feel like there's probably one left, but I have no strong feelings about who they are. Going by the high score is Brian, and I've played with him as a cheater once, and he was kind of inscrutable then, too. So it could be inscrutable, <laughs> but I don't know what that means. But okay, aha, uh -huh, that's one of those AI words. You must be AI. <laughs> I'm, I'm an AI. <laughs> we just had a a huge dictionary and grow it up. Anytime you didn't know, um, the word's definition, it was dictionary. So that meant we looked it up. <laughs> People online could use that, I think. That'd be helpful. Uh, Anyone want to add anything here? I said Baconator, but then didn't take it. And I would have given myself points if I <laughs> knew answers. I'm scared to try the Baconator. <laughs> I'd like to, <laughs> but I'm a little put in the game and who were scared as a cheater. I think <laughs> the, the vegetarians have had enough of the burger talk. <laughs> We have a good number of them. Uh, any other thoughts before we vote? And send a cheater fact here. Cheaters who may or may not have been eliminated are fine with Colin sneaking Carmen San Diego into every game because that's where she should be. I need the six of you to please lock in your votes or you can vote for no cheater. Votes are in. Let's see if we have done it again. Found another cheater or maybe there's no cheater. Okay, we're going to start with Carmen this time. Carmen, what'd you say? Normally I go alphabetical, but since no cheater is an option, we're going to just pretend like everybody here is honest. No cheater. One for no cheater. If you all vote no cheater, we're going to see if everyone wins the bank right now. Uh, MK. I said Brian. Are you muted? One for Brian. All right, so we are voting someone out of the game. Brian, who'd you say? I said, uh, I don't know how I did well in this game, but I said Liz because she was the second highest. Okay. One for Brian, one for Liz. Allie. I said Brian because he had the highest. Two for Brian. Liz? I said Brian. Three for Brian. Alex? I had no idea, so I said Brian to join the misandrist revolution. <laughs> oh, we have voted the other man out of the game. Four for Brian is out joins our audience again we have a lot of money on the line big moment here brian we have to know were you a cheater yes i was he was nicely done you have found a second cheater all that money once again stays in the bank 346 dollars and 37 cents we told come back you on lie cheat and steal our five players are going to make it go for immunity at a crucial moment we'll be right back I still have my reservations about Liz, and then because the three of us all picked a new identity, I'm not 100% when Carmen and MK, but... I have the same number but I might, thing again. I where... might be persuaded to go, to go no cheater. I might. I might could. Will you take favors? <laughs> <laughs> I live Seriously, nowhere near you. I remember the last game I played with you, Brian. That's it. No. In, in the audience, Brian, what gave it away for me was uh, the in and out double-double. 
We are down to five players on Lie, Cheat, and Steal. Two cheaters have been voted out of the game. Maybe there are more cheaters left. Maybe not. We have over $340 in the bank. And it is time for the round three immunity challenge. Time to grab immunity. A very crucial moment. Move on to the final four tonight. I will give a question with multiple answers. Last player left standing, giving right ones. Wins immunity, cannot be voted out. Just like the other rounds, cheater gets all the answers to this question if there are cheaters left. Additionally, if as a team you come up with five answers, you bank 10 bucks, 10, you bank 20, 15, you bank 30, 18 is 50, and it's been uh, one week since it was last one or two weeks, so it's up to $60. Most importantly, last player left standing, wins immunity. Category is movies for which Meryl Streep received an Oscar nomination. And uh, there are only 21, <laughs> only, but there are 21 possible answers here. Liz, you are first. Um, Sophie's Choice. Sophie's Choice, of course. We are on the board. Alex. Devil Wears Prada. Devil Wears Prada is right. Allie. That was like literally the only one I was sure about. Um, I'm going <laughs> to say Out of Africa. Out of Africa is right. Very good. Okay. We have three. MK? Uh, Bridges of Madison County. The Bridges of Madison County is right. Carmen. I'm old, sorry. I'm going to try for Kramer versus Kramer. Kramer versus Kramer is right. We have five. Bank $10. And we go back to Liz. Uh, Julie and Julia. Or Julie, Julie and Julia, yeah. Alex. I feel like this isn't true because they're objectively not great movies but they are very fun but Mamma Mia Mamma Mia wouldn't be the first bad movie she got nominated for but she did not get nominated for Mamma Mia no sorry <laughs> so the question we go to Allie the only other one I can think of is the deer hunter the deer hunter she was nominated very good MK you have a guess death becomes her Death Becomes Her, kind of a cult classic. She was not nominated for an Oscar for Death Becomes Her. I'm sorry, no. I love that movie, though, but I didn't think it was. Down to three answer. of you, Carmen. Um, Did she get anything for Little Women? Little Women, uh, she did not. No, sorry. Really? Down to Liz and Allie. One of you is going to win immunity, Liz. Um, The Iron Lady. Now, there's one of the bad movies she got nominated for, The Iron Lady. Very good. Yeah. Allie. Oh, the only uh, I'm going to just guess the last movie I saw her in, which was the Don't Look Up movie on Netflix. I don't think she was nominated, but that's the only one I can think of. <laughs> she was not. No, I'm sorry. And Liz has won the immunity. Very nicely done. Liz, you will not be voted for this round. Uh, but you can keep going, adding more money to the bank. Two more answers. We're at 20 bucks. Okay. Um, Doubt. Doubt is right. Ian just under his breath went, you know you make me want to um, doubt. doubt the musical that would be that would be something <laughs> yeah blues brothers in doubt <laughs> <laughs> i want that crossover real bad oh, uh, yeah I... <laughs> uh, I feel like she was nominated for a golden globe for this but i'm not sure about an oscar i'm gonna say it's complicated it's complicated she was not nominated for an Oscar. I'm sorry. Probably because the Golden Globes do comedy and drama and then the Oscars just do one. Yeah. So, yeah. You got nine. Very good. You have the immunity. That's the important thing. Uh, we're going to see what our audience knows. If they can come up with one more answer, uh, they'll get, uh, since the 10 is banked, they'll get 10 more right away. Ian. Oh, shoot. Uh, oh. You can talk it out to the other people. If anyone knows any, just shout them out. Um, all right i'll 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 go with the one that tom seemed iffy on and say french lieutenant's woman the french lieutenant's woman very good that's right Ooh, thanks tom 10 more dollars if you get uh five more it'll be another 10 mike you're next all right i'm going to go with something that uh, susan suggested which is florence foster jenkins florence foster jenkins are still going very good tom um 
Okay, I, I have no idea, but someone just suggested uh, The Witches of Eastwick. The Witches of Eastwick, she did not get an Oscar nomination for okay. it. No, I'm sorry. Take a look at the other answers here. We have a good number. Like I said, it's 21 total. Very impressive career, obviously. Silkwood, Ironweed, A Cry in the Dark, Postcards from the Edge, One True Thing, Music of the Heart, Adaptation, August Osage County, uh, Into the Woods, and The Poe. Oh. Yeah, Into the Woods. Look at that total, $356.37. Liz won the immunity for the round. Everyone else is vulnerable to be eliminated. No cheater remains on the table. You have found two cheaters. Talk it out. What do we think? I don't feel quite confident to say no cheater yet. I might. I might go. Liz would be the only person I think I would vote for. And so because she's immune, I might just go no cheater. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I guess rule clarification. Liz has immunity, but if she is the cheater and we vote no cheater, does an honest person still get? Good cut? question. I think so. No, no matter that, that, her immunity doesn't affect anything. If you all vote, I'm feeling very if you all vote no cheater. <laughs> if you all vote no cheater, uh, yes, she she could still be in the random. If she's honest, she could be in the random honest elimination. Yes. Well, I just, admit, but if she's yeah. the cheater and we all vote no cheater, does that mean we lose? You lose half your money and a random honest player leaves the game. Okay. And whoever yeah. the cheater you think might be. Yeah. So, just, yeah, that's... Her immunity doesn't affect that. I just think that more than three people is risky to do more cheater. Yeah. I mean, and and were... I just feel that way just because I always felt that way. Yeah. So. I mean, there were several, like, games before, but, yeah, I don't feel quite confident to say no cheater, and I don't want to get voted out for everybody saying no cheater because there was a cheater. Okay, well. That you gotta decide on somebody then, right? <laughs> I know who I'm gonna vote for, but I don't want to say it, so. Yeah, I don't we'll want to say all it. Vote. <laughs> we'll just all vote. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Maybe I do have no apparently ties. a cheater fact here. Uh, the cheater or cheaters who may have been eliminated think Meryl Streep should streak at any Academy Awards show where she isn't nominated. <laughs> All right. I need the five remaining players to vote for who they think is a cheater. You cannot vote for Liz. Welcome back to Lie, Cheat, and Steal. The March Cheatness final votes are in. You know that Liz has the immunity. She cannot be voted for. Liz, who'd you say? I just went back to MK. Kay. I don't I don't have a reason. I'm sorry. One vote for MK. MK? What happens? Uh, well, I couldn't vote for Liz, so I didn't. Um, so you're lucky. <laughs> um... <laughs> wow. This is so aggressive. <laughs> a little bit there's a lot of money on the line they're they're showing their cards now um i said alex just because i've had fewer games with her right ali who'd you say i again wanted to vote for liz or no cheater but my hands were tied and so just because she's been so under the radar i went with carmen hey carmen who'd you say now i don't feel so bad ali <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> one Allie, one Carmen, one MK, one Alex. All right, oh, Alex. Yeah. 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 Alex. Liz. I, Next in alphabetical order, right, Tom? I said MK because uh, I know there were a few votes for MK early on, and I'm terrible at reading people in this, so I'm hoping other people are better. And that is enough. MK has been voted out of the game. And once again, moment of truth, over $350 on the line. MK, were you a cheater? I was not a cheater. Oh, I'm and sorry I'm you have sorry. voted out. The same reason, player. because I was about to pick a number, but then I was like, no, I'm vibing with this number, and I got an honest number. I'm sorry. So you do lose half of that money, down to 178.19. Uh, it is time to ask for the first time tonight if the cheaters have won. Is there an honest player left in the game? There is. We continue on with the four of you. We'll be right back 
Lie, Cheat, and Steal. Welcome back to Lie, Cheat, and Steal, the March of Cheatness Finals. We are down to just four players. I've started with 21. Maybe there are cheaters left in the game. We know there's at least one honest player left in the game. Let's continue on here. We have to give two answers per question now. Uh, name the 10 common uh, sci-fi tropes for writers, according to Writer's Digest. Going to have 30 seconds to talk about it. Let me go to Alex for her first answer. Go. Aliens disguised as humans. Um, I don't know. Alien warfare. It um, would like probes. <laughs> But like space, like traveling the through machine warp turning speed on or it. something count? It's it's not as general as just like the future, right? Like a future apocalypse or... No, well, I mean, travel, if you, if you, I would be general. Go. And if you're not, if you're too general, I'll just say be more specific. So you won't be docked as a wrong answer. Uh, Alex, you're first. Give me a sci-fi trope. Um, the machine's turning against us. The machines turning against us. Yeah, bad robots. Two fifty. Very good, Ali. I'm going to go with post-apocalyptic world. Post-apocalyptic world. No, believe it or not, not one of the top ten. Parman. Well, uh, since we just came out of one, how about a pandemic? Pandemic. No, Liz. I'll say aliens disguised as humans. Yeah, aliens are human or aliens disguised as humans. Very good, 350. Back to Alex. Time travel. Time travel issues, number two, $1. Yeah, there's never just a regular working time machine. Allie. I didn't know we were going to keep going. Um, yeah, double answers here. <laughs> monkeys in space. <laughs> Monkey <laughs> in space, my favorite I love trope. It. The I love first it. thing that popped in my head. No, sorry, it. not monkeys in space. I'm not a sci fi person. Carmen. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with um, like, the, uh, like the chosen one. Like The chosen one. Okay. No, sorry. And one more from Liz. Um. I guess traveling through like warp speed or something like that. Is that a trope? Does that sure. count? Sure. Warp speed. Yeah, space travel issues. Very good. 50 cents. Oh, all right. Good enough for me. Uh, all right. Audience, most recent eliminated MK. What do you got? I am having a brain fart, but. Um, Anyone oh, can help out if they want. Uh, government conspiracy or overarching conspiracy? That's what I was going to say. Um, I'm looking. Uh, no, that doesn't quite oh. fit into this. I I'll show you what I mean in a moment, but it's not quite one of okay. these. See what we got. Uh, alternate universes. Oh. Everything is a simulation. Bad aliens. Pure energy life forms. This is why I was like, secret laboratory base is not really the same as a government conspiracy. Oh, yeah. And uh, mad scientists. Okay. Moving on. What defines bad aliens? Just aliens that want us dead in general? That are the villains in some regard. Yeah. Aliens that are aliens, aliens that are already. Sunglasses, ride a motorcycle. They're right, really, right. They're aliens really that are already boys. occupying uh, planets we're trying to colonize. So wow. we got to get. Name these things. They could be movies, they could be books, anything else, by their original or working titles. Rapunzel Unbraided, Revenge of the Jedi, Shoeless Joe, Deaf, Dumb, and Blind, They Came from Denton High, The Florida Project, Tremultio and West Egg, Spaceman from Pluto, Hash Mountain, and Not Tonight, Josephine. 30 seconds to talk. Then we go to Allie for her first answer. Go. I know the first one's probably Tangled, right? Or I would guess. I imagine the second one's Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure the third one's Field of Dreams because they talk about Shoeless Joe Jackson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say Damn Yankees, but the scene's better. I know West Egg was in The Great Gatsby, but I have no idea what Tremontio would have been. I don't remember a character. Um, Rocky Horror Picture Show was set in a town named Denton, but I don't know for sure. Allie, you're first. 
Uh, I'm going to go with Field of Dreams. That's the one I'm most confident on. For Shoeless Joe. Shoeless Joe was the original name of Field of Dreams. Very good. Three dollars. Carmen. Yeah, I was going to do that one too. Um, Deaf, Dumb, and Blind. Is that Pinball Wizard? It's not mm. Pinball Wizard. I'm sorry. No. Good song Liz. though. Huh? Great song. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess Revenge of the Jedi is Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi is right. Two dollars. Alex. Uh, it's Rapunzel Unbraided Tangled. Tangled, yeah, very good. I think they chose the right name in that case. Back to Allie. I really want to. Oh, I want to try number seven, but I'm not. I'm not confident. I think. I think I'm going to go with Rocky Horror Picture Show for number five. I know it came from seven. Denton High, working title of the Rocky Horror Show on stage before it became a movie. Very good. Finally, my more category. of a uh, <laughs> B movie sounding name. Yeah, Carmen. Let's see. How about Spaceman from Pluto? Back to the Future. That is right. Back to the Future. Very good. <laughs> the studio insisted on calling it that, and uh, the people who wrote it hated it. They got right. Steven Spielberg to talk to the studio heads, and he was like, "The guys say nice joke," and they could they didn't have the nerve to tell Spielberg they hated it, so they just <laughs> stuck with Back to the Future. Liz, um, is the Florida Project just like mess? <laughs> <laughs> Meth, I'm sorry, is not the right answer. Alex. Sure. I'm going to use a rollover. I'm going to use a rollover because I don't know. Okay, who do you want to roll over to? Um, I mean, Allie. Allie, what do you got? I don't, I don't, oh, I feel like number four has to be a Helen Keller story, but I don't know that, I don't remember the name of that actual movie. I'm going to throw a wild guess that Seven is Great Gatsby. I don't think I'm right, but that's Tremolcio is a famous Edna. clown. West Egg, I think it's a clown. West Egg is in Great Gatsby. That was the working title of the Great Gatsby. Very good, Allie. All right, very impressive audience. Now, let's see who's next up in our audience who might know one of the remaining answers. Next up, we have Aza. The Florida Project is a movie. But it I is, but I, this is not about, what, yeah. I think you're talking about, uh, is it Disneyland that's in Florida? So, no, I'm sorry. Disneyland is in California. Okay. Walt Disney the World cocaine, was oh. the Florida Project. Oh, yeah. I thought it was the All right, Deaf Dumb and Blind, you said Pinball <laughs> Wizard, which is the song. It was Tommy the album. Oh. oh. Uh, okay. Number nine, Cash Mountain was the working title of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And not tonight, Josephine was the working title. I think someone in the audience was chatting about this when they had it. Some like it hot. Yeah, I forgot about that. Bad. Yeah, very good, Susan. All right, four players left in the bank. Very impressive. 206 69. Here are the totals. Uh, the audience didn't make any money that round, so their total stays the same. They are at $175, but we can talk it out. Do we think there's a cheater? Do we want to vote somebody out or is it time for no cheater? Remember, if just one player casts a vote, we will be voting someone out of the game. See, Liz would be Liz would have been the only person that I would have wanted to vote for. And then in that round, I felt like she was being honest. So I'm I am pretty strongly leaning towards no cheater. Just putting it out there. I'll just remind you once again. If you all vote no cheater and you're correct, you win the game right there. Four-way split of that money, it'd be about 50 bucks a piece. If you're wrong, I cut the money in half and I eliminate a random honest player. The game goes on. Or you can vote somebody out of the game, continue the game with three players. Those are your options. Anyone else have any thoughts before we cast a vote? Okay, the four of you, I need you to lock in your votes, please. Votes are in. See if we have found a cheater or if we're voting no cheater. There are just four of you left. We're going to start with Allie. Allie, what'd you say? 
I really feel like they're going to vote me out, but I stuck to my word and I voted no cheater. I don't think there's a no cheater. cheater. All right. If all four of you do that, we're going to be playing for all the money in the bank. Liz, who'd you say? Or what'd you say? I said Allie. Damn it. I told you you would. You lost money. One for <laughs> Allie. Harmon? Liz. One for Liz. What, Liz? One alley, one no cheater, which means nothing. Alex, what did you say? I said alley. Two for alley, and she has been voted out. Maybe for going the Great Gatsby, which I don't know. Actually, that comes up a lot in this game. Alley, moment of truth. You're going to swing $100 possibly here. Were you a cheater? Hell no, I wasn't a cheater. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just she was an honest player. We're down to 103.35. Okay, so we have to ask once again. We... Are there honest players left in the game? At least one. Go on. Three of you left. We'll be right back. Lie, cheat, and steal. I'm so sorry. I, it was almost, I almost. It's your own money, ladies. It's your own money. <laughs> I almost voted Liz, and then I was like, Ali's gotten some real obscure ones. The past couple rounds. The Great Gatsby Apparently, is not obscure. No, but it's, like, no, it's not. It's not. Out of Africa, like maybe I'm just young. I don't know. But yeah. like, I will take that as a compliment because I'm definitely old enough to have seen Out of Africa. <laughs> Ellie, I, I don't want to bring you down too much after that compliment that Alex gave you about being so smart, but um, she does write fiction. Oh, we have a very smart group in general. To call, <laughs> I'm to just make impressed. me a cheater, dad, father. <laughs> Welcome back to the most dramatic lie, cheat, and steal ever to steal a line from The Bachelor, but it's actually correct in this case. We started this tournament with 21 players. We are now down to just three. Maybe there are cheaters left. Maybe there aren't. But before the break, they voted out an honest player. We're down to 103.35 in the bank. We're going to play two more questions here. Then our players are going to cast a vote. Now, there is a chance that this game will go six rounds after someone is eliminated this round. The final two players will be able to play a final round if they choose to continue the game. Let's play our next two questions here. We have 103.35 in the bank. Two of you have your rollovers left to use. Name these game shows by their synonyms. So like with before, I just took the major words, put them through the thesaurus app, put the first one it gave me. Herald, disc of affluence, achieve drop or tie, bounty exploration, acquaintance or adversary, the basement, the bride to be business, accuracy or corollary, the alarm appearance, distant authority. 30 seconds to talk. Let me go to Carmen for her first answer. Go. I mean, disc of affluence is clearly wheel of fortune. Yeah, then Jeopardy for peril. Yeah, that makes sense. Bounty exploration, I feel like. I feel like that's treasure hunt. Okay, I've not heard of that, but. Win, lose, or draw for $1.50. Friends or enemies? Friend or, friend or foe? Carmen, you're first. I'm going to go with the basic peril for Jeopardy. Peril is Jeopardy. Very good. And I couldn't use a cheater fact the last time I did this question because Beers sent me the cheater's favorite game show is Peril. I'm like, wait, I'm using that one a different time, Beers. <laughs> uh, Liz, you're next. Um, I am going to say uh, Treasure Hunt for $2. Bounty Exploration was the, uh, yeah, the 70s and 80s game show Treasure Hunt, $2. Alex? Is there a game show called Friend or Foe? Because that seems like the obvious for acquaintance or adversary. Friend or Foe? There was a game show called that very good, two fifty. It was a, another test of trust kind of game show where people hated each other. Back to Carmen. <laughs> um, achieve, drop, or tie. Is that win, lose, or draw? Win, lose, or draw. Very good. 150. Liz. You said the floor, and I wouldn't have thought of it if you hadn't said it during banter. <laughs> but the basement. It, is that the floor? 
It is the floor. Yeah, I can't help but talk about how much I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> and yet we both Three watched dollars. all of it. We did. We did. Uh, Alex. So disc, disc of Affluence is Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is right. All right, that's six. Go to our audience now. I have no idea what any of these are. Anyone want to help her with any of these? Anyone uh, have any idea? Joe had a good one. I, I will call out Joe for giving good answers. The Gong Show for the alarm appearance. The alarm appearance. The Gong Show. Very good. Nice. Yeah, thanks. Oh, wow. 450. Susan. So do my fellow audience members agree with me about number eight? Yeah. Yeah, go with it. I think it has to be. Truth or consequences? Accuracy or corollary. Truth or consequences is right. Okay. Now it's Allie's turn. I, um, all right, good. Thank you. This just popped up. I'm going to try uh, the wedding game for the bride to be business. Oh, it's close. I'm sorry. The newlywed game. Bride to be. Uh, uh, it's not, yeah, yeah. Uh, I knew what it was, but I didn't know the name. I thought it was right. the honeymoon game or something. Yeah. So no. this makes no sense on its own, but when you see each individual word, it checks out. Distant is remote. Authority is control. Remote control. Uh, Double money question here. I think a young Adam Sandler was on remote control. He was, and Colin Quinn. And Colin oh, Quinn. Yeah. Name the first 10 spoof films Leslie Nielsen appeared in following Airplane. Man, he's been in a lot. 30 seconds to talk, then we'll go to Liz for her first answer. Go. I have genuinely no idea. I don't I don't even have a distant guess. Not a clue. Um these are all going to be things that pop up and I go, "Oh my god, of course." Oh man. They're all they're all parody I, films. I know you know them. I don't I know which should... ones, but he was in scary movie. Oh. Okay. okay. And then there's so many of those, we could probably just run the list. I'm just going to be like, <laughs> another <laughs> time. Okay, Liz, you're first. Um, all right. Uh, right. Let's see Scary Movie 2. Let's try that. Scary Movie 2, he was not in. I'm sorry, no. Damn it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Alex. Scary Movie 1? Scary Movie 1, he was not in. I'm sorry, no. Uh. Carmen. <laughs> I'm going to leave that for the scary movies for them to keep guessing. I'm going to try with uh, Spy Hard. <laughs> Spy Hard is number seven, seven dollars. Very good. Hmm. Suspicious. Don't we are be back suspicious. to Liz. All right, babe, are you okay? No. <laughs> he is not even in the game. I'm not. I can't say anything. <laughs> You're next up though in the audience again, so be ready. Okay. <laughs> scary movie three. My God. Number 10, the scary movie three. Very good, Liz. Just just judging mathematically, I would not guess any more scary movies. <laughs> Alex. Uh, I don't know. That was a show. Um, you know what? I know it's wrong, but like, not another scary movie or something. There's something Not like another that. scary movie. Oh there is God. not another scary movie on the board. Sorry. I thought it was the shit out of that. Carmen. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, Naked Gun? Naked Gun is number two, two dollars. Very good. You're now going to go to our audience. Ian, what do you got? Oh my God, Naked Gun. Oh, I just said Naked Gun. He, Sorry, I was raising in the chat about how no one was saying Naked Gun. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> We had to um, get through all the scary movies. Uh, sorry, Naked Gun one and a half. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna count it because you said the two same it's two and a half, two and but a half. that's fine. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Naked Gun two and a half. Thank you. are thinking Lion King one and a half. Yeah, I was. Yeah, she was thinking of that other classic parody film, the uh, the Lion King one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> fan is next, Mike. How about Repossessed? Repossessed, yeah, the uh, Exorcist parody where Linda Blair reprised her role. Three more dollars. Tom. Wasn't there the, an Airplane 2? Airplane 2? There was an Airplane 2. Uh, that was uh, below his pay grade, though. He was not in Airplane 2. Okay. Uh, he was His career was taking off again after that, and he was not in that. Let's see who made the board. We have The Creature Wasn't Nice, what? a parody of Alien. 
that no one has heard of. <laughs> uh, we have Naked Gun 33 and a third. Oh my God. Dracula dead and loving Dracula it. Dracula dead and loving it. Wrongfully accused, a parody of The Fugitive in North by Northwest. And yeah. uh, the worst name and probably worst movie on this list that I've heard of. 2001 A Space <laughs> Travel. <laughs> in the Bank, 132.85. Here are the totals for the whole game. Do we think there are cheaters? Are we voting somebody out? Do we think no cheater? Talk it out before you vote. What do you think? Part of me wants to say no cheater because the last two times I had been tempted and I ended up not saying no cheater and voting out somebody who wasn't a cheater. But I will say Carmen let us go back and forth on the scary movie thing during the talking bit, like Blame without me. saying a word. And then all, <laughs> as soon as it was her turn, it was like, bam, bam. We also <laughs> were saying we have no clue. And then she was like, "I he's in some of the scary movies. And then that was the <laughs> only thing. And we ran with it. And okay. I, I think that was a completely fair move on her part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she does also strike me as somebody who knows movies pretty well, so I feel like it could be No Cheater. I feel like No Cheater is not best interest. Anyone want to add anything before we vote? All right. I know the audience is already making some bets. All right. Well, I need the three yeah. of you That'd be so to lock in your die. votes. Vote has been cast. See if our three players have come to a consensus here. All right. Let's start with Alex. I voted no cheater. One vote for no cheater. Harmon. I voted Alex. No, just plain. I, I voted no cheater. <laughs> Two for no cheater. If Liz votes no cheater, we're going to play for that mm -hmm. money right now. See if you've won it. If not, whoever she votes is out of the game. Liz? Said no cheater. Three votes for no cheater, which means this game could be over. Or if there's a cheater left, we are losing a random honest player. I will say Carmen said voting no cheater is in my best interest. So if we find out there's a cheater in this game. All right. Carmen, Liz, Alex, 132.85 is on the line. If you voted correctly, you will split that three ways. That is about $45 a person, which would not be bad for all the tournament play. If you are wrong and there is a cheater, you lose half of that money, and immediately I eliminate a random honest player. Carmen, Liz, Alex, you played wonderfully so far in this whole tournament. You all moved on from your initial game. You played five rounds already tonight, and I can tell you... The game is not over because there is still a cheater in it. I'm sorry. I'm going to cut that money in half and say goodbye to oh. Alex. I'm sorry. Oh. You're an honest player. You've been eliminated. We are down to two. Before we take our break, we need to ask that all-important question. We know there's a cheater left. Is there an honest player left? Is there one honest player left in the game? There is. That means one cheater, one honest player. And when we come back on Lie, Cheat, and Steal, we'll play our final round and then have our audience vote. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the final round of Lie, Cheat, and Steal, March Cheatness. Before the break, our players made a go for no cheater. Unfortunately, they were wrong, and Alex was randomly eliminated from the game. She was an honest player. And we know now there is one honest player, one cheater, left in the game. Carmen, Liz, you are our final two in March. You currently have 66.43 in your bank. You got two more questions to build up that bank. And then since we know the score, the audience is going to vote. So let's play our final two questions here. You get three answers apiece on these questions. Name the 10 most respected movie critics, according to a 2023 movie web article, Dead or Alive. 30 seconds to talk, then we'll go to Liz for her first answer. Go. I only know two. Like Ebert and... Siskel and Ebert, those are the only two I know. Right, exactly. 
And do they count as one or would they be separate? So they could be 10, you do them separately, right? They're, they're, they're two different people. Let's, let's... Yeah, there's no pairs on here. Uh, no Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> are they on, do Muppets count? <laughs> respected. Liz, you're first. Give me a respected movie critic. Go with Ebert. Ebert is number one, 50 cents. Carmen. And I will go with Gene Siskel. Gene Siskel, number two, one dollar. Back to Liz. Um, there was a film critic in who was portrayed in the movie Lady in the Water who got killed by alien dogs or something while reciting one of his own reviews that he used against M. Night Shyamalan. And I don't know his name. But I believe M. Night Shyamalan would have just called him like a douche McGee or something. Yeah, kind of like the left behind naming. A douche McGee is not on this list in name. I'm sorry. No. Mm. Carmen. When when all else fails, my go to answer for everything. Prince. Prince. <laughs> no, sorry. He's not on here. One more from Liz. What? <laughs> Three answers. Final round. Two players. Oh, come on. Um, it, it's you, Colin. It's been you all yes, along. I put myself on my own list. Yeah, no, sorry. Carmen. Ooh, do I have a rollover? Can I still you roll do. over? You roll over. <laughs> <laughs> that's so Liz, rude, you're on the that's spot. so funny. Oh, uh, <laughs> God. Um, all right. Uh, I bet Shia LaBeouf reviews his own movies pretty loudly. He's not famous anymore, though. Sorry. Uh, or respected. <laughs> go to the audience. Alex. So I know a movie critic that I don't think has had a long enough career, but I'm going to say her anyway because it would be cool, and I've met her. Sure. Uh, Monica Castillo. Monica Castillo. No, she didn't quite make the top ten. Let's see who did. We have Mark Kermode. Pauline Kale. Kenneth Turan, Andrew Saris, Francois Truffaut, Leonard Moulton, Stanley Kaufman, and Vincent Canby. And yes, Ali is correct in saying that Susan knows everything. <laughs> Can't disagree with that. Andrew Saris um, coined the term auteur theory, and the uh, director of Galaxy Quest decided to name the villain in his movie Saris. Mm. Which would only back up auteur theory because no one can name the director of Galaxy Quest. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the final question of the game. Last chance to bank some money. Last chance for the audience to pick up on clues. What do these trios of songs have in common? Route 66, I've been everywhere in the heart of rock and roll. I love New York, the West Virginia Hills, and you are my sunshine. Gonna fly now, everybody's talking in Ghostbusters. Cats in the Cradle, the Bells of Rimnia, and her Sandman. My Sharona, I Love Rock and Roll, and Another One Bites the Dust. Last Kiss, Dead Man's Curve, and Leader of the Pack. Isn't She Lovely, Tears in Heaven, and Glory by Jay-Z. Monster Mash, Tennessee Waltz, and Best Song Ever. Born to be Wild, The Wait, It's All Right, Mom, Only Bleeding, and Moonlight in Vermont, Tom's Diner, and Lust for Life by Iggy Pop. 30 seconds to talk it out, then we go to Liz Carmen for her first answer. Go. All right, the only one I know for sure would be five dollars and they're all they have weird owl parodies um uh number three i was thinking i don't know soundtrack yeah maybe uh two dollar they all involve states if you count sunshine state time okay carmen you're first I am going to try the seven dollar one. I don't know if I have to be specific, but they're about their children. Yes, these are all songs the artist wrote about their children. Very good. Seven dollars, Liz. Um, I will say five dollars. They're all Weird Al. They're all on Weird Al's first album, even. Yeah, very good. Very nice. Five dollars. Back to Carmen. Going out on a limb. Uh, for the ten dollar one, were those songs about their college experience? Songs about their college experience? No, sorry. 
Liz? Um, I'll, I guess $2 that they have states. Uh, actually, they are all uh, songs of states, official state songs. You Are My Sunshine was written by the governor oh, of wow. Louisiana. So very good. Oh, all right. Accidentally, right? Yeah, it has nothing to do with the Sunshine State, but you got it right anyway. Back to Carmen. One more answer. Do, do, do. I'll just go with the $1 one. Is that about highways? You're, no, not about highways. I'm sorry. Liz. I'm going to give my roll over to Carmen. To get her back. <laughs> All right. One more ah, from Carmen. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime. Um, number one about traveling. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, they all list cities, so I'll count that. One dollar. All right. Now we go to our audience who is all talking out some answers here, I know for sure. Beers. Uh, uh, I will uh, I will listen to my betters on this because I don't know a whole lot of these. Um, so I'm going to say, you guys tell me what to say. Uh, I the think the $9 one. answer is songs that are in easy rider okay so we'll do i'll do that one that nine dollar answer is songs that are in easy rider yeah very good tom songs in easy rider nine dollars uh, i i also have to give credit to aza for that okay aza, aza said that one in the chat too yeah. it came up with it at the exact same time yeah. um eight dollars songs referencing other songs yeah they're all songs about other songs we don't actually hear very good just like Don't the Ignition actually... remix. Yeah, but I'm not going to mention R. Kelly in this game. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ian, you're next. Um, I, 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 I don't want to mess it up for everybody else, so I'll say a safe one and say that four has nursery rhymes in it. Yeah, they're all inspired by or mentioned nursery rhymes. Very good. Four more dollars. Let's see who's next. Mike? I believe... Amy suggested that the three dollar answer is that all those are Oscar winning songs. They are not Oscar winning songs. I'm sorry. No, everybody's talking and Ghostbusters did not win. Actually, I don't think any of them won. Maybe Gonna Fly Now did. They are all just movie theme songs. Oh, Dang it. we oh. had some guesses for six. Anyone know? Like, yeah, Does it uh, have a uh, motorcycle uh, noise motorcycle. in it? Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's songs for the boyfriend dies. No yeah, it's, it's teenage teenage tragedy oh. songs. Yeah. I don't know if they all have boyfriend. They all have a boyfriend noises, motorcycle noises in them. All right, ten's really uh -huh. tough. Anyone know number ten? Moulin in Vermont, Tom's Diner, Lost for Life. Go away, Oh, were they all based in uh, New England? No. Were they based on um, like poems, no. or they all talk about Egg Benedict? Nope. Do they have the name Johnny? <laughs> Do they have the name Johnny in them? <laughs> no. No. They all hum? No, they are all, last chance, songs that don't rhyme. Oh. Wow. <laughs> all right. In the final bank tonight for the whole month of March, Carmen, Liz, eighty-two ninety-three. One of you will take that home. It is up to the audience to vote. So they don't have the no cheater option because we know that there is one cheater. We know there is one honest player. So. Before they vote, Carmen, Liz, they're each going to have 15 final seconds to defend yourself. Carmen, you get to go first. 15 seconds, go. I um, said no cheater was in our best interest because Liz put on a really good game. Liz, 15 seconds to defend yourself to the audience. Go. Um, I... Uh... I voted no cheater because Carmen said it's in our best interest. So I voted no cheater. And then it turned out to not be in our best interest. One of them just lied to you. And it is up to you to vote. Audience, your bank currently stands at a very impressive 221.50. So everyone who gets it right will win some money out of that. If you correctly send me the name of the player who is a cheater. So. You have this whole game to look at. Remember, one of them is a cheater. One of them is an honest player. I need everyone in the audience to please lock in their vote now. Vote has been cast. 
see who has been voted out of the game and who will take home 82.93. Additionally, the audience has that 221.50 banked, which means 11 audience members, every audience member who gets it right wins $20.14. So pretty sizable chunk for every correct audience vote as well. Before we reveal who the cheater is, uh, let's reveal these audience votes. So this could be interesting. Mike, start with you. Uh, Carmen. One for Carmen. Alex. Carmen. Two for Carmen. MK. Carmen. Wow. Beers. I voted for Carmen. Seems pretty decisive. Susan. Carmen. Ian, who do you think? Oh, of course I said Liz. <laughs> so it's not unanimous. <laughs> Allie? Uh, I said Carmen. I hate we can't see her face right now. <laughs> not on mine. She's not on mine. <laughs> Amy? Carmen. Joe? It'd be really funny if this is wrong. Carmen. <laughs> Aza? I change my answer if I feel bad for somebody. <laughs> you cannot change your answer. <laughs> I voted for Carmen. I'm sorry. Tom. I voted for Carmen initially, then changed it to Liz. <laughs> yes. So that is two votes for Liz, nine votes for Carmen. That's pretty decisive. Well, first of all, congratulations, Liz. You have won the 8293. We need to find out how many audience members are winning some money as well. <laughs> Liz, Carmen, one of you was a cheater, one of you was an honest player. It is now time for the cheater to reveal themselves. Who was it? It was me the whole time. God damn it. Was it is. <laughs> the only me. thing I cheated on was cheated myself out of money. Oh yeah, my you voted out an honest player. Amazing. The cheater is the hell. Wins Tom and Ian, congratulations. You're the only ones to win a share of that bank. 20 Hell bucks yeah. a piece. Everyone else, I'm sorry to say, yeah, you don't win any money after all that audience betting and answering. But yeah, Liz is our big winner. She takes that was home a great 82, game, Liz. 93. <laughs> she has fooled everyone. Quite an upset. That was that was quite a game. You guys played well. And yeah, it's a cheat through uh, 11 rounds of lie, cheat, and steal. That's our game. That's Lie, Cheat, and Steal. Thanks, everybody. We will see you for the next one. Damn. How on any earth Back to the Future was at some point called Space Man <laughs> from Pluto. No, that's because no. when he first appears in the past, they think he's a spaceman from Pluto. Oh my gosh. Everyone, everyone except the studio absolutely hated that title. So you are right to wonder why anyone would call back to the future right. space man from Pluto. The I think that was wonder the exact same thing. We would not I... be talking about that movie if it had been called Space Man from no. Pluto. <laughs> I, I think that was the title of George McFly's book at the end of the movie. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, either either the spaceman from Pluto or he came from Pluto or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. I think um I think actually um that was the wasn't that like the book he was reading? I think it was the comic book um, they read in the past, right? And they say, "Oh, it's yeah, him. He's the space because man the Pluto. book, the book that George McFly wrote at the end was a match made in space." Right. You'd think if he was writing a book, it'd be like he came from Vulcan or something. <laughs> well, he's a best-selling author by that point. He could have written all those books. This whole thing gets so aggressive with so much estrogen. God. <laughs> wow. It has ten dollars on Ian doing a sexism. Nicely done, audience. <laughs> that was my bet, oddly. Yeah, enough. you're right. That's kind oh. of up there. Uh, it's and complicated, it's really good. Everyone should watch it. I love it's complicated. Very funny. It is really it's cute. I like it. It's a lovely movie. <clears throat> But also in it, Meryl Streep plays a baker, but she's routinely out till like 11 o'clock on dates. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and she never has to wake up early. Like... Yeah. <laughs> it's We're complicated, bro. It's suspension of disbelief. Did you say a baker or a banker? Baker. Uh, a baker. Like a bread maker. Pastry. Yeah. <laughs> she makes croissants in the movie. 
in it's so like, little time really quickly yeah, yeah. fast oh, you wanted a movie about baking croissant. in real time <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, I do. Yeah, I'm gonna choose movie. croissants. <laughs> Blow down the entire movie for realistic <laughs> croissant making. Wow. It was a disaster. My arch deluxe nemesis. <laughs> it was, they had a sauce that was a combination of Dijon and mayonnaise, and they called it Dijonese. It was basically New Coke. Yeah, which sounds like the left behind people trying to come up with a French name. <laughs> <laughs> I think they make Dijonese now, though, like for real. They do. <laughs> you can make it's a thing dysentery. I think of Oregon Trail and James yeah. died of dysentery. No, what? No one said dysentery. They said misentery, <laughs> which is different. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. the only person. There's a way dysentery. to die in Oregon Trail from misentery. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Definitely not in the 19th yeah, century. Sorry, I mean, I heard. <laughs> she said he was a victim of dysentery and why she can steal.